Hello, and welcome to The John Ark Show. Today's episode is called, New York City is now more dangerous than Moscow. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe, like, comment, and follow us. Also, remember to click on the notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. Um, I'd like to tell you about a service called HollywoodIsCalling.com. It's a great service that allows you to purchase live phone calls from your favorite celebrities, so check them out. It's something you can buy for yourself or as a gift for someone you love. Now, let's get started. We now consider New York City to be more dangerous than Moscow. Now, if you look at the official statistics, you will uh, they will both claim to still be fairly safe. But in reality, the official statistics for both cities are lying through their teeth. Let's start with Moscow first. The tourism people and the government will tell you that it's relatively safe to travel and do business in Moscow or New York City. The key word is relatively. Let me give you uh, some interesting examples and, and stories. If you travel to Moscow now and you go to any of the major tourism sites, you will see a lot of security. But if you venture off the beaten track, you will see just the opposite or something far worse. And that usually means being robbed by the police or people pretending to be the police. If you go to New York, you will quickly find out that there's very little police protection or appropriate response to 911 calls. The city seems to be more preoccupied with people singing in their homes during the holidays than they are about the explosion of ultra violent crimes in the city. If you go to YouTube and search for crimes in New York subways, you will find countless videos of people engaging in unbelievable crimes, and many of them are caught on tape because there are so many security cameras in the subways. If you search for them on YouTube, you will see an endless list of people raping other people on the subway and just laughing and posing for the cameras while they're doing it. You will see many videos of people shoving random men and women onto the train tracks in an attempt to have them run over by a train that's fast approaching. Given how frequently this happens, um, police are beginning to think that this form of random uh, subway murder or attempted murder is some new form of a, a recreational game that seems to be spontaneously erupting in the criminal culture. Uh, oftentimes, it appears to be done by young men who just go down into the subways for the express purpose of trying to kill people for the fun of it. You can see them high-fiving each other right after they shove an old lady onto the tracks in an effort to kill her. Now, being attacked, robbed, or raped has been going on for decades in Moscow, but when you talk to people about it, it now appears to be escalating uh, in a dramatic fashion. People in Moscow seem to take the same pleasure in videotaping themselves committing crimes and posing them online as Americans have been doing for a while now. The difference is that in Moscow, they will rob or rape, and, and then they'll get your ID and send a text message to your family, threatening them with the same thing if they don't pay them a ransom. In New York now, there is a crime occurring that is becoming more and more common. It involves criminals stealing the wallets of someone who sort of looks like them and then deliberately dropping that stolen ID at the scene of their next big crime. The purpose of that is to throw the police off their trail and have them go, on, uh, go after the person in the ID that uh, they just stole uh, to, uh, to prevent the actual perpetrator of the crime from being pursued. Now, there's another growing phenomena in New York that we're calling tax violence. The government is now doing everything it can to raise taxes in what are clearly unconstitutional ways. The city has tremendous debts that it can't pay, and so they're getting so deranged in their efforts to raise more money that they're uh, simply proposing or attempting to levy taxes that are clearly unconstitutional. New York is one of the cities that is now considering taxing people after they move out of the city. That means that if you move to Florida, New York wants to keep taxing you after you become a Florida resident. 
Another huge problem in New York is one that the police are calling YouTube crimes. These are crimes that are being committed for the express purpose of getting filmed and uploaded on video. It used to be that people committed crimes to steal money, to make money. Now it's being done for YouTube views. Um, you know, people, people used to videotape themselves dancing or singing, and then they'd upload that, upload that video to YouTube to try and attract uh, more viewers or subscribers. What they do now is they go out and rob, burglarize, or rape people, and then film it. One thing that seems to be growing in popularity amongst uh, teens is breaking into a business or home and then videotaping themselves, having a bowel movement on the floor while they film themselves, laughing at the camera. The perpetrators seem to think this is as funny as it is a great way to disrespect somebody you like, or maybe just, or you, you don't like, or maybe just a complete stranger. In some instances, they will even text the business owner or the homeowner a video of themselves doing the dirty deed on their floor. Another thing that is growing in popularity in New York is something called homeless immunity. That basically means that if you're homeless, you can get away with it almost, you can get away with almost any crime and not get arrested for it. The common belief is that the police only ticket or arrest people they think they can squeeze money out of, but if you're homeless and doing drugs out in the open or robbing people or burglarizing their homes or cars, then the police will not even bother with you because they know the prosecutors won't charge you. They will basically let you walk back out, out onto the streets again. Because of that, there's a new category of criminal out there called the homeless mafia. Listen to this. These guys will dress and act like homeless people while they commit all sorts of crimes. Most of these guys won't bathe for weeks or they will smear cream cheese under their armpits to smell bad enough to convince people that they're really homeless. Now, if you look bad enough, smell bad enough, and act crazy enough, then most police will give you what's known as the homeless immunity and just ask you to move on and get, get the heck out of the area. The homeless mafia almost never gets arrested or charged with their crimes because the politicians don't want to be seen as anti-homeless or as cruel or unforgiving. The next huge problem in New York is rent extortion. Even though landlords know there is a moratorium on rent evictions or foreclosures, they are still badgering tenants who can't pay their rent because they've lost their jobs. They're coming up with all sorts of really creative ways to try and force them out. Some of them are starting major construction or renovation projects now, uh, and these projects are so loud and so openly intended to try and force their non-paying rent tenants out of the building that this is now becoming more and more common. Some landlords are even uh, paying crackhead squatters to move into the apartments of their tenants who refuse to pay their rent. They'll pay homeless people to move in when the tenant is out of the apartment for a few hours. Then when the non-tenant paying, uh, when the non-rent paying tenant comes back home, they find that their apartment is now occupied by three smelly homeless heroin junkies who are refusing to move out. It's like a new crackhead version of the War of the Roses movie. The next phenomena that makes New York worse than Moscow is that in Moscow, the schools are still open. In New York, they are now closing all the public schools so that in addition to being out of work and not being able to pay your rent, New Yorkers now have to figure out what to do with their kids during the day. So with that, I want to thank you for watching and tell you that we're going to have more great celebrity interviews coming up soon. And we're going to have great breaking news stories in the future. So we want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new story. Thank you for watching.